Now let's quickly get into this and just, you know, talk about the healthcare services over in Zimbabwe. How really would you describe, you know, the access to healthcare services over there? Yes, uh, thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, so much of the challenges that we are having in Zimbabwe um, are that uh, we have a constitution that provides for the provision of primary um, and that every citizen has a right to actually have uh, access to primary health care. But that is only subject to the availability of uh, state resources to do so. But um, the challenges that we have had is that uh, over the years, there has been um, an neglation by the government to actually support uh, health care. As you would know that uh, we, have, uh, we are a signatory to the Abuja Declaration, which uh, actually stipulates that um, uh, every country in Africa should actually have 15%, uh, provide 15% of its budget towards its health care. But you find that uh, this has not been happening in Zimbabwe over the years. And uh, this has led to a situation where our medical professionals are not motivated enough to actually uh, be providing uh, you know, health care. Uh, that's number one. Number two is that our hospitals also are not um, equally equipped to provide health care for, 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 for the people. And if you look at the early years of our independence, between 1980 uh, to 1990, the first decade, which was um, the decade of promise, <coughs> known as the de decade of promise, Zimbabwe had actually free health, health access, but um, as a result of what we had in the early 90s, where we had the economic social adjustment programs, where there was privatization of the health sector, we have had challenges since then. And uh, over the years, if you look at the history of Zimbabwe, Post 2000, we've had um, challenges with inflation after the land reform program, where our currency lost its value, uh, where we also witnessed the rise, um, the unprecedented rise in corruption. Uh, it meant that uh, it affected the health sector because funds that were meant to support uh, that particular sector were actually diverted. And now the situation has been made worse by that um, there is big motivation for, 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 for health care workers. And in the end, they are forced to actually migrate to, to other countries. So, um, uh, in a nutshell, that is the kind of um, those are the kind of problems that our health sector is currently facing. And now let's uh, you know talk about why you know these health workers are leaving the country, and this is obviously to seek greener pastures, seeing you know that they're not uh, really paid enough or paid well, especially for a service that they are providing to a people that are in dire need of it. Describe to us also what the average wage looks like for a health worker over there in Zimbabwe. So uh, the cover, the average wage, you find that there is what is known as two hundred dollar US dollar allowance, the COVID nineteen allowance, two hundred US dollars, which is what is not a salary, but the average salary is something between forty to fifty thousand Zimbabwean dollars, which is about uh, um, uh, less than fifty US dollars per month. So it's a pittance, really, if you have to consider the cost of living, particularly post-COVID-19, where people are having um, challenges with uh, cost of living, challenges with having to uh, actually survive. So it means that um, they have been forced to, to, to be corrupt. In some instances, they have to ask for, for, for bribes from patients. And in some instances, they have to be found actually selling some other things you know, so that they can survive when they are at work. So it's a, it's, a, it's a kind of a crisis. In some instances, some of the doctors, some of the nurses have to sell medicine uh, from, from the hospitals uh, so that they can actually uh, survive. So this has forced most of them to look for opportunities in other countries, such as the UK, Australia, Canada. You know, let's just also talk about how the healthcare workers are receiving this news that the government intends to introduce a law that would make it illegal for other nations to recruit, uh, you know, uh, healthcare workers from their country. What is really being said, especially by the healthcare workers around this news uh, that is coming through from the government? Yes, uh, thank you so much for that particular question. Uh, so the challenge, uh, what the government is saying from the government side, um, they are saying that uh, they are investing uh, a lot of money in training nurses. And they are saying that you cannot have the people that we are training being um, actually, I, I have to quote the, the vice president, who is also the minister of health, who has actually said that um, they cannot be training people for other countries. Uh, and that um, taking our nurses is 
I quote, a crime against humanity, where they are saying that you cannot take the people that we are training and taking them to America, to Australia, to Canada, and to other uh, developed countries. So their argument is that we cannot have um, <coughs> developed countries taking away the nurses or the people that we are training for ourselves. But uh, from the side of the health professionals, they are also saying that it is very unfair for the government because they are saying that they do pay for that part because there is no free education, free higher um, intentional education. There is no free education in Zimbabwe. And their, their, their claim is that um, they are actually paying for that education and there is no justification whatsoever for the government to actually deny them uh, the right to, to work in other countries. Because they are saying that it is uh, themselves that are paying for their for their own school fees. So now uh, it's a, it is a challenge because once it, once it becomes a law, it will need to be challenged before the court of law. But for now, it is still a proposal um, that has been proposed by the government, so that these people do not actually uh, get the opportunity to work in other countries. But if you are to look at it, really, it's unfair on the part of the of the medical and healthcare workers because. Uh, with the kind of skills, with the kind of the risk that they go through, you cannot be giving them uh, um, so, such little or such a pittance um, given the cost of living and the conditions of, uh, of working that they, they have to be subjected to.